Welcome to Hidden America. Today's video, we're going to discuss the esoteric nature of professional sports, the ritual and ceremonial aspect of the games, leagues, and players. Sports are literally America's Masonic pastime. In ancient Rome, bread and circuses was a method by the unresponsive government to appease, pacify, and distract the lower classes by offering free food and elaborate shows. Today, professional sports continues this tradition. When Rome fell, a circus was thrown, the Circus of Nero. But to view sports as strictly bread and circuses, aka a distraction, is to miss the metaphysical narrative, the great right. Sports is a religious experience. The Olympics were and are held to honor the 12 Olympian gods. The Mayans held some similar ceremonies to their gods. Michael Nowak writes in The Joy of Sports, To have a religion, you need to have a way to exhilarate the human body and desire and will. In the sense of beauty and oneness with the universe and other humans, you need chants and songs, the rhythm of the bodies in unison. All these things are found in sports. The sports arenas are the new churches. The drama of sports is the gospel. More than any other sport, baseball shows an esoteric and holy Masonic structure. It is as outwardly an exoteric ritual as it is an esoteric ritual to the players who are the initiates. The umpires are the grand masters. The audience are willing participants. An equal exchange of energy takes place. Baseball is played on a geometrically perfect square. A mason stays on the square. Each base stands at the four quadrants or four cardinal directions as seen in Masonic ritual. These four bases also stand for the four classic elements. Home plate, which the dirt is ritualistically cleaned off by the umpire, symbolizes the element of earth. Third base is called the hot corner. This symbolizes fire. The circular pitcher's mound squares the circle. The pitcher's mound represents the fifth element, the quintessence or spirit. Now, Freemasonry is based off the number three, the Holy Trinity, the three blue lodge degree structure. Baseball is also based off sacred geometry and the number three. Three strikes, three outs. In masonry, nine is expressed as three times three. The triple tenere, nine innings in each game, nine positions in the field. There's 27 total outs in a ball game. Teams play 81 games on the road and 81 games at home. Remember, in numerology, numbers are reduced to a single digit. Therefore, 3 times 9 equals 27. 2 plus 7 equals 9. 9 times 9, or 9 squared, equals 81. 8 plus 1 equals 9. 27 and 81 are both multiples of 9. There's 81 stable elements. Again, 81 is 9 squared. Anton LaVey called 9 the number of the ego, as it always returns to itself. LaVey said not 666, but 9 was the number of the beast. Well, the Masons call, three, call it three times three, or nine, the perfect number. The pitcher is the hierophant. The catcher is the hermit who controls the ritual by signaling to the pitcher in an almost sexual nature. The batter is the fool whose fate depends on the Trinitarian three strikes or four balls, the trivium and quadrivium. Four plus four equals seven, God's grace. Four balls, three strikes. The sacred name of the Hebrew God, known as the Tetragrammaton, or Hashem, or to the Masons, the Lost Master's word, is four letters, but in truth, it is three letters. One letter is repeated twice, yod Hey, vav Hey. Again, four balls, three strikes, a trinity within the Tetrad. The fool must face the pitcher. The pitcher represents the evil demiurge. The batter must overcome the blind god. The demiurge throws fastballs, curveballs, sliders, trying to confuse the fool. It's the batter's job to defeat the evil demiurge and get on base. A full count is when the batter has three balls and two strikes, three and two. The 32nd degree is when men become sublime princes of the secret in Freemasonry. 
Now if the fool strikes out, the demiurge reigns supreme. The batter must return to the dugout, back to the symbolic womb or Plato's allegorical cave, only to only to wait for his next opportunity or his next earthly incarnation to seek the light of the great architect of the universe. But if the batter hits a home run, he becomes a star like those in the firmament above. The phallic bat is his wand that he uses to aid him on his quest for enlightenment. He hits the ball out of the park, the park being the shackles of the earthly realm, finally defeating the demiurge. The shortstop, oftentimes the strongest defensive player on the field, is able to move freely and defend in the infield and the outfield. The shortstop is the psycho pump. He is Hermes, thrice greatest, or the Egyptian dog-headed god Anubis. He is the guide of souls who moves freely from the spiritual planes to the material realm, from the infield to the outfield. The umpires are the high priests who wear their ritual garb. Their blue uniform is their allegorical lambskin apron. The umpires or high priests make sure the ball game or the ceremony is performed according to the law. Now each professional league is a secret society within a secret society. Exactly like Freemasonry, an order within an order. The audience are the profane masses who can participate in the Masonic ceremony by paying for their ticket and exerting their energy by cheering or booing, but they can never know the real secrets of the universe. The ritual teaches as much about the esoteric structure of society as a whole. No secret teachings or initiatory grades are needed to participate. Only a ticket to the bleachers, the nosebleeds. This is as esoteric a ritual as one can find, but the inner structure is there for those who understand. The initiated, the mystical meaning is hidden in plain sight, like so much other wisdom hidden in plain sight. To make the majors is to be initiated, to move up the ranks. Rookies who just get called up from the minor leagues are the neophytes or candidates moving from an entered apprentice to a fellow craft. The seasoned veterans are elevated to the status of Master Mason, but still one of the three Blue Lodge degrees, the symbolic degrees, the Hall of Fame where players are choose, choose the York Rite or the Scottish Rite. These Hall of Famers work their way up the seven rung ladder, hoping to be elevated to the fable 33rd degree. The men who have elevated their status from mere mortals to gods among men. These Hall of Famers are the ascended masters of the past, the Great White Brotherhood, who smile down from Mount Olympus on those who play their glorious game. They know only a select few will ever become part of the club, the elect. Babe Ruth, Willie Mays, Ted Williams, Roger Hornsby, Cy Young, Ty Cobb, Honus Wagner, all Freemasons. Freemason Branch Ricky signed Jackie Robinson, the first black player to the Los Angeles Dodgers, the City of Angels. I'm sure Jackie was a brother as well, a boule. In truth, they're all Masons. Teams are even thought to be cursed. The Boston Red Sox fell under the curse of the Bambino. 86 long years between World Series pennants. 86 long years of strenuous pennants until they reached the promised land, Israel. 86 years. To be 86 is slang to murder or get rid of someone. It was said that Jimmy Hoffa was 86 under the end zone of Giant Stadium. The Cubs were also cursed. The curse of the Billy Goat. The Cubs went 108 years between winning championships. 108 years. One equals unity. Zero is the absolute. Eight equals infinity. 108 is known as the most sacred number. There just so happens to be 108 stitches in a baseball. Now speaking of the goat, when a candidate is initiated, he is riding the goat. Now in sports, goat is an acronym for greatest of all time. Leviticus 16.18 says, Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one for Jehovah and one for Azazel. In the NFL, Tom Brady is the goat. Tom Brady became infamous later in his career for his pregame rituals involving his wife, Giselle. Rituals within rituals. Giselle predicted Brady's Super Bowl wins, going as far as saying, 
thankfully Verdi married a good witch. Now, sacred objects are often displayed by the fans. The very name fan comes from fanatic, which derives from the Latin phantom or temple. The audience, the profane fans, hurl insults and profanity in their team's jersey and headgear with appropriate symbols, all ritual attire, energy extraction at its very finest. Now, there is 32 teams in the NFL the 32nd degree is when the true Masonic doctrine is revealed. Like the NFL, Masonry is a boys club, but the cheerleaders participate in the exoteric ritual. These are the Masons' wives and mothers, symbolizing the all-female order, the Eastern Star. Now, for an esoteric ritual, it is as exoteric as it possibly could be for those in the club. Crook or flail, initiates or profane, Black or white, majors and minors, microcosm and macrocosm, modern sports are a metaphysical ceremony, an esoteric ritual, a highly religious experience. It is a mystical rite, the great rite. It is a holy spiritual experience to the players and those who watch the games become just as invested into the game as the players who play the game itself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit more allegorical and nuanced, but I honestly felt like it was too beautiful of a topic not to cover. I want to thank each and every one of my Patreons. I appreciate all of the support on Twitter and Instagram. The digital copies and physical copies of my new book, The Book of Number, Omnia and Numeris Sita Sunt, is available now. Links in the bio. You can also get your copy of Piercing the Veil as well. A bundle with both my books is now available. Make sure to follow me on all social media platforms for similar 